The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Whom should I dread? When those who do evil draw near, they stumble and fall. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Savior. Brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to enter the sacred mysteries, calling to mind our sins. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may, at your prompting, discern what is right, and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah came to a cave where he took shelter. But the word of the Lord came to him, go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. A voice said to him, Elisha, why are you here? He replied, I have been most zealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. But the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to the sword. I alone am left, and they seek to take my life. The Lord said to him, Go. Take the road back to the desert near Damascus. When you arrive, you shall anoint Hazael as king of Aram. Then you shall anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel, and Elisha, son of Shaphat, of Abel Melodah, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I long to see your face, O Lord. I long, I long to see your face, O Lord. Hear, O Lord, the sound of my call. Have pity on me and answer me. Of your heart, my of you my heart speaks, you my glance seeks. I long to see your face, O Lord. Your presence, O Lord, I seek. Hide not your face from me. Do not anger repel your servant. You are my helper. Cast me not off. I long to see your face, O Lord. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. I long to see your face, O Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Shine like lights on the world as you hold on to the word of life. Alleluia, alleluia. Your blessing, Father. The Lord be in your heart and on your lips that you may proclaim his holy gospel worthily and well. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, You shall not commit adultery. But I say to you, Everyone who looks at a woman with lust has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body thrown into Gehenna. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one of your members than to have your whole body go into Gehenna. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife must give her a bill of divorce. But I say to you, whoever divorces his wife, unless the marriage is unlawful, causes her to commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I know that you probably have all seen this picture that Deacon John drew of me. You think he did a good job of depicting me? You think it's abstract? How long do you think it would take you staring at this image to discern my image? The rest of your life. Though I think that's one of my eyes, and that might be my nose over there. <laughs> the gospel speaks of the new law that Jesus is giving to his disciples from the mountain, the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, the law has one function. I'm going to stand over here to represent, and that is to kind of tell us what is good versus what is bad, right? And to the extent that uh, all of life uh, could easily be just put in those categories, that's all you need is the law, okay? Look it up in the law. Good, bad, do the good thing, don't do the bad thing. But we know that life is a lot more complex than that. And there are a lot of situations where we're really in a situation where it's not always clear what is good or what is bad because of the complexity of life. Or it may be an invitation by God to choose between more than one good thing, right? If all you have is the law, you're gonna be lost over there. If all you have over is, you know, clearly defined good or bad, then you'd be lost when you get over here. And so God has promised us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He's promised the church, both individually, as we're living a life of grace, but also collectively. What we see in the first reading, I think, from uh, the prop from Kings, where Elijah is on the mountain, is something subtle, but let's pay attention. He's sitting there in the cave, and there's just this strong wind, and he does nothing. And then there's an earthquake, and he does nothing. And then there's fire, and he does nothing. It's as if he has some kind of a spiritual attentiveness that he's waiting for God to pass by. And he knows it's not the wind, and he knows it's not the earthquake, and he knows it's not the fire, but as soon as there is that still, small voice, then he jumps up and goes to listen to the voice of God. That's something that has to be cultivated within us as disciples through the course of our life, is learning to listen and to discern, to be able to sort of see the little subtle hints of God in his spirit that are particular to us. I often uh, use the example of learning a foreign language, okay? It's not easy, and it takes time, and we have to really apply ourselves to paying attention 
And as we go through, we gradually learn that foreign language through a regular, repetitive, you know, presence to that, to those words and to those sounds, etc. Well, prayer is very much like learning a foreign language. Okay? We can read sacred scripture and we can get to know God through His Word. Uh, we can certainly get to know God through our own life of charity and seeing God at work in others and ourselves through prayer, uh, through the teachings of the church. All those things are helping us learn the language of God. But nothing is ever going to take the place of sitting still. Sitting still and paying attention. You know, having that quietness of soul. And if there's one thing that challenges us in our world today is that it seems like it's a veritable global conspiracy to keep us from ever having moments of stillness, moments of quiet, where we can let things settle down, right? Those of you who've ever gone on a retreat, especially if it was more than just three days, if you go on a long retreat, heck, even going on vacation out to the mountains or to the to the forest or to the some other to the lake and just being still. So I think today's scripture readings teach us, at least show us, that for us to really live fully the life that God wants for us, we have to work and tune those spiritual, supernatural senses uh, that help us to know the will of God and to follow His voice. So brothers and sisters, let us turn to the Lord and ask with confidence that He hear and answer our prayers. May our hearts be focused on the Lord so that our thoughts and attitudes towards others will be full of respect. We pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray our prayer. May those who struggle with their marriage vows find a new peace in rediscovering in their families the joy of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, I pray our prayer. May we in our prayer discover God's presence in the quiet of personal prayer. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the repose of the soul of Peter for a sin. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also today, join me in praying for Matt Reggitz, who celebrates his birthday. We pray to the Lord. Lord our Almighty God, our hope is in you. Allow us to feel the strength of your love through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. The Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all the Holy Church. Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in goodness you created man. And when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty. Dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. O Lord, holy, holy, holy Lord, God of our God. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The Son of the eyes. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The Son of the eyes. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Daniel, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen.
the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you give away your sins in the world. Have mercy on us. Now, God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my saving strength. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to do what is right. 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless and protect you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.